Viktor Frankl is a psychiatrist who survived the Nazi concentration camp and created the whole concept and the idea of logotherapy. And he wrote the classic book, Man's Search for Meaning, where he describes his experiences that he had to go through in the Nazi concentration camp Auschwitz and what he learned from that. So a lot of people are facing adversity and problems and they have a lot of excuses in their lives, right? We always complain about how bad everything is around us and how, you know, our situation is very unique and that we just can't make it because our surrounding, our environment is making us unfree and we have this horrible situation. But then here comes a guy who survived the concentration camp of the Nazis and wrote a book about mastering meaning, who wrote a pioneering book about core human freedom and how no matter how bad your circumstances are, no matter how bad your situation is, even if you get completely stripped of external freedom and your personal rights, no one will ever be able to take away your core freedom. So if this is the insight of someone who survived Auschwitz, then we have to start to think about how we can use this in our own lives. Because let's be honest, I hope for you that you will never have to experience anything as terrible as Frankl experienced in the concentration camp. And yet we are still facing adversity and difficult situations and sometimes circumstances aren't in our favor. And yet what we do is we blow that up. We make it so big that it literally cripples us in a way where we give away our power. We give away this core inner freedom that we have that Frankl talked about. So although we cannot change our environment, we cannot control the, the situations and what happens to us in our life, we can always control what it means to us. And this is one of the big concepts that Frankl talks about. He talks about mastering meaning and this core inner freedom that we have as human beings is our ability to decide what something means to us deep down. So no matter how bad our situation is, no matter how much freedom has been stripped of us externally, we can always decide what it means to us. We can always choose to master the meaning that we attribute to what is happening to us in our lives. And this is very, very, very profound. It's like what Stephen Covey uh, calls your circle of concern, which basically are the things that you cannot control in your life. So instead of focusing on that, instead of trying to change your situation all the time, because sometimes you can't change it. Sometimes things happen to us for whatever reason that we cannot change. But what we can do is we can shift our focus from that circle of concern onto our circle of influence, what Stephen Covey calls the circle of influence, which is congruent with Viktor Frankl's concept of the core freedom. So we can always decide what something means to us. And this leads to even a greater and bigger topic that's even more important, which is the whole idea of purpose. Okay, so it's very, very important that you discover what your purpose is in life, what you want to do with your life, with your time. You have to be the one attributing meaning to what is happening in your life. You have to be the one attributing meaning to your life and why you're here on this planet. 
So you have to take responsibility for mastering meaning and taking control of your purpose. Because if you don't do it, you will fall into an existential vacuum, okay? And now Frankl talks about this and he describes that our society has just lost its ability to master meaning and to find a purpose in life. And that's a cause and a source of a lot of neurosis and psychological tensions that we have. So just think about things like depression. Might it have to do with meaning, how we attribute meaning to what is happening in our lives? It's very obvious that it has something to do with that. So for example, um, Viktor Frankl talks about the Sunday depression because we get distracted during the whole week when we're working in a job, in a nine to five job that we hate, that isn't really meaningful for us, where we can't really fulfill our purpose. And then on Sunday, when that distraction, that noise and that chatter is removed, we can feel that existential vacuum within us. And that's what Frankl calls the Sunday depression, right? A lot of us, probably a lot of people also listening to this, might have experienced this in one or another way, where you just, you're at home alone at, on, on a Sunday, uh, you know, no distractions, the whole chaos and chatter of the week is over and you're just left with yourself alone. And that's when you realize the lack of purpose that you have. Or when you wake up in the morning and you have that nagging feeling, that latent, low-level depression where you just wake up in the morning and you know something isn't good, something isn't right and you lack that purpose. You don't have that motivation and that sense of fulfillment when you wake up in the morning. And again, that's a symptom of this existential vacuum that so many people are in, in our society. And also that causes a lot of mental and emotional problems that we have. And as I would say, is also very, very related to this huge trend of people being depressed in the last couple of years and decades. So what you have to learn from Frankl is that sometimes you cannot control what happens to you, but if you focus all of your energy on that pain and just letting it drag you down and taking on this victim role, this victim mindset, where you totally give away your power and you literally depress yourself as a result of this, then you have to snap out of that and slowly start to master the meaning that you attribute to the different situations, events, and happenings in your life. Sometimes this means finding meaning in pain. Sometimes it means finding meaning in loss. Finding meaning in horrible things that happen. Sometimes it means that. Mastering meaning isn't always something happy. It's not something, it's not a feel-good activity. But by finding something that's greater, by finding that meaning, and again, it's up to you to find that meaning. There is no objective meaning. Asking the question, what's the purpose of life? What's the meaning of life? Is a totally silly question because for everyone, it's something else. No one can answer this question for you. It's up to you to answer this question. And this is something you have to do throughout your entire life if you want to live a mentally and emotionally balanced and healthy life. 
you have to start to find your own purpose in your life. You have to find something greater than you. You have to start to master meaning in a way where you can reach your full potential and you will always be able to tap into that inner core freedom that's beyond everything external, that's beyond your situation, even beyond the concentration camp. And once you're able to do that, you can dramatically change the course of your own life. Because this also connects with the whole idea of free will. So we all have a free will, at least that's what I would say. There is neurological research that claims the opposite and I've been studying a lot of that and there's a lot of controversial discuss discussions going on in this field and yet I am someone who argues for free will. I believe in this core inner freedom that we have because if we wouldn't have it then some of the things that I did in my life wouldn't have been possible. And I know for sure some of the things that you have done in your life wouldn't have been possible without free will. I've transformed my life in ways and overcome pain and adversity in ways where I had to use so much willpower and really tap into that core freedom, into that essence where you just have to find something that's greater than the, the situation that you're in. That's something you have to do before you can really execute your free will and go into a certain direction in your life. Okay, so between stimulus and response, there is a little gap. So contrary to what psychology used to teach for many years and also philosophy. You aren't determined. Your life isn't determined, okay? It might be to some extent, but yet there is also this gap between stimulus and response. Without that gap, no personal transformation would be possible. No psychotherapy would be possible. Nothing in that direction would be possible. So what you have to do is you have to learn to continuously tap into that inner freedom, into that space, into that gap between stimulus and response. And the way to do that, the first way to do that is to change the meaning that you attribute to a certain stimulus in your life. Something happens and instead of reacting immediately, instead of giving a response that would be basically uh, almost determined by the stimulus, you have to tap into that core freedom, use your willpower and your free will and decide what something means to you. And that's the first step how you can take control of your life by mastering that meaning, by entering that gap, you know, that space in between stimulus and response. And then in a second step, you can start to act contrary to that stimulus. So when something happens in your life, first of all, you change the meaning, the attribution, what it means to you, and then you act in a way that is congruent with that new meaning that you attributed. So you can sometimes act contrary to your emotions, sometimes contrary to social conditioning, contrary to the whole surrounding that you're in. So step number one, again, to recap, you have to change what things mean to you. That's the first freedom. And the second freedom is you have to change the way you react, the way that you actually take action with that new meaning being attributed to the situation that you're in currently. And if you learn to execute these two core inner freedoms, 
you can become the master of your own destiny. You can take control of your life's destiny step by step by training this, by exercising your willpower and by becoming better and better at mastering meaning and finding your purpose. You can become so strong and so good at this that you won't be a puppet of your circumstances anymore. You won't have this feeling that someone is controlling you outside of you. That there are some invisible strings that are moving you and controlling you. This feeling that you have no power in your life. You can overcome it by doing this and by tapping into this core inner freedom on a consistent basis. So you become the person having the, having the strings. Of course, in a way that your surrounding and your situation allows. Again, if you're in a concentration camps, uh, in a concentration camp, maybe the only strings that you have that you can control is just the meaning, your thoughts, and everything else is out of your control. You can't really control your actions. You can't get out of the situation. You can't control if you'll be shot tomorrow or today or if you'll starve, but you can control the meaning. So you have always at least one string in your hand that allows you to intervene into the greater, bigger picture of your life. And many of us don't have it as bad as Frankel, right? We're not in a concentration camp. And yet we are so stripped of our own power and of our own core inner freedom because we don't realize that we have to master meaning and find a purpose in our own lives. So take this on your journey with you. Um, find ways to master meaning. Really, really view your whole life as a continuous journey to finding and discovering and fulfilling your own purpose in life and start to escape this existential vacuum that so many people are stuck in these days. And I promise you, you'll be able to dramatically transform your life and reach amazing levels of fulfillment internally and also reach many of your goals that you have.